Hey everyone, what's up Mayor Katie Rosenberg here along with the amazing Marathon County Health Department education know-it-all answer all the questions person Laura Scuderi. That's my full title. Yeah. Yes, it's hard to fit it on a business card. <laughs> Which is why I have none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us again. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So Anna from Facebook had a question I wanted to ask first. Okay. Um, she's been asking some good questions. And one of them was, uh, why is Marathon County kind of lagging behind some of the other counties, especially when it comes to that first injection? So the, the limiting factor in our county right now is the amount of vaccines we're getting. So the state decides how much it's allocating to different areas of the state. Um, and they're using this, uh, this formula that is so complicated that they showed us once and it was just totally over my head. Um, but it involves the social vulnerability index. Um, and what that means is that places with more vulnerable populations uh, get, get consideration during vaccine allocation. Um, and so we could be doing so much more with more vaccine. And that's why I'm really hopeful that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be getting a lot more vaccine. Yeah, I guess we do have a bigger population than maybe some of our neighbors around here. So um, I can see why that would, why that's happening. Okay, so more vaccine, more vaccinations. Hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll see that number kind of bump up and you can brag into the other counties then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so obviously today was kind of a big day. A lot more people are now um, eligible for the vaccines, um, but there's still a ton of 65 plus folks who haven't been vaccinated yet. And so I'm getting some questions from people about if they miss their window, is it just over for them? No, no. In fact, all of our healthcare providers that I meet with, with on a weekly basis are still prioritizing individuals that are 65 up. So if you are age 65 or above that, please call your healthcare provider, uh, go online, get somebody who is uh, savvy with the online stuff to help you out so that you can, uh, you can get on a register, you can register, you can get on a list uh, and we can get you in and get you vaccinated. Okay, this is really good news. Um, some some personal news. Uh, I just want to wish my dad a happy birthday uh, this week. He'll be turning 65. So I really hope that for his birthday, he gets a little, you know. <laughs> what a happy good birthday. day to have your birthday. It's like, that's a, the present we can get him is some mRNA. Let's right do it. <laughs> it. It's loving. Yes, it's very exciting. And also, you know, can't go out for birthday parties now. So at least it's a little human touch there. And, you know, maybe pick up some to go kick on the way home. <laughs> right. Is that weird? Yes. Happy birthday, dad. <laughs> okay. Um, the last question I have for you is about um, this emergency youth use authorization that these vaccines are under. You know, I'm hearing some people saying, you know, I don't really trust that. When is it going to be FDA approved? So I can be like, okay, it's approved. I'm good. Mm -hmm. What do you know? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question. I, I call that one of my crystal ball questions where, you know, people ask, um, you know, when is this going to happen? And, and I could make a guess. It would be probably as good a guess as you would give, Katie, you know. Um, but, well, I don't know anything about it either, so. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my sense of it is going to, it's going to be some time yet because when they go through, they do longitudinal studies and um, during clinical trials and stuff. Um, but uh usually when people ask that question, they're concerned about safety. And what I can tell you is that this, this vaccine, these vaccines have been tested in tens of thousands of people. And, uh, and they've been deemed to be safe. They've been deemed to prevent uh, serious cases of COVID-19. Um, they've only had mild side effects on ge in general. There have been a few severe side effects for people that have shown allergies, but most people, they either have mild side effects or no side effects. And the side effects that when they do get them, the mild ones are like pain in the injection site or fever or fatigue or, or a headache. Um, and generally they take some, like Matt Barnes, which we spoke to before, you know, you take some Advil and um, and you just kind of rest and, and get, get your body ready for coming back into the world. Okay, well, thank you. So emergency use authorization is still gonna be our thing for a little bit, but, mm -hmm. but expect that soon. We're safe though, the big message, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, okay. it's safe. Get your vaccine. The best vaccine is the one that you can get. So okay. whatever vaccine you're going to get, uh, you're, it's going to, there might have be mild symptoms, but most, the, most people don't have that bad of a time with it. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, that's good news. Uh, we just quickly answered all three of my questions. So thank you very much for another great week of questions. Yeah. It feels like we're getting quicker with this, Katie. So <laughs> like maybe pretty soon we'll do one and it'll be 30 seconds. Oh my gosh. Maybe <laughs> I'd have to cut down on your title. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, cool. Katie. Bye.